Zoning in on football now. Goals were hard to come by as Jamaican host Trinidad and Tobago contested a two-match international friendly series, which ended on Sunday at the Larry Gomes Stadium in Arima. Sunday's encounter ended nil all after the Reggae Boys clinched Friday's opener 1-0 thanks to a debut strike from the 19-year-old Kahim Dixon at the Hasta Crawford Stadium in Port of Spain. Jamaica introduced 14 debutants across the two matches and while head coach Heimer Paul Grimson admits there is work to be done. He says it was a worthful ex worthwhile exercise. This game today, probably not the most beautiful football game I've seen. Um, there was a lot of, from our side at least, more longer balls than Trinidad. Uh, it was difficult to, to keep possession of the ball, so we did um, too early always looking for the long ball. Uh, but in, in general, it was a... Um, it was a competitive match, always a, a, a physical games against Trinidad. Um, and I thought we, we coped with it quite comfortably, didn't concede a lot of chances. So if we take the if we take the positives from this match, it's it's uh, we, we played without anyone getting injured. That, that is a big thing in the end of season or coming to the to the end of the season, not to, to get players injured for, for their clubs. Uh, back, back home in Jamaica, we played two games, I kept a clean sheet, so we can be happy about, about the defensive part of our game. Hey, Mar Halgrimson there, the Jamaica head coach. Both teams were comprised mostly of local base players, but TNT's head coach Angus Eve says his boys have some way to go to be able to match the physical demands of international football. I thought it was a good competitive game for the local players to play at this kind of intensity. Um, so the exercise for both teams over here, the, other, the coach Hema spoke, um, the exercise was excellent for both teams. Exactly what we wanted to get out of it is what we want. Sometimes, you know, people ask for players to get opportunities and these are the opportunities that, that we give to them um, over these two matches. And sometimes um, you get to see um, who could stand up to physicality and who could stand up to the pace of the game and stuff like that. So. Um, when I say our league plays a little bit too slow, normally I get licks for it a lot of times. You see some of the guys who are cramping up there at the last, um, some of the games that we, we have to get our players more fit and more active in the games. Angus Eve there, former TNT international now head coach of uh, the Soka Warriors. Now former international and the current football analyst Brent Sancho covered both games and he joins us now to look back at what happened in the games on Friday and Sunday. Brent. Let me start by asking you your reaction to the post-game comments from both coaches. Let's get your view first on what Hal Grimson had to say. Well, lads, uh, first of all, I, I would say that uh, it's good to see both coaches have not just uh, a mutual respect and, and, and of course, uh, a working relationship, but it's also good to see that uh, they've been sharing information, they've been trying to, to make uh, both programs better. Uh, and both games was really designed to give uh, some of those uh, young players the opportunity that they probably wouldn't normally get because, as you know, there's always Nation League game, World Cup qualifiers games that would see a certain grouping of players play. So this was a game played outside the international window that gave the opportunity from the domestic league players to have a chance to have a uh, full international game. So that had a tick box that was excellent for, for all the teams involved. Uh, but certainly the, the messages sent from both coaches is evident to see, uh, especially with the two games that transpired. The Jamaican team, uh, certainly in the right path, there's a, there's a, a caliber of players that could possibly step in uh, for some of the injured players uh, that uh, probably would be called up or should be called up or would be called up for the USA game. And of course, the Trinidad players are looking to be part of the, the Canada game. They still have some ways to it, particularly the bunch that played on Friday, you can see there's a certain level uh, of uh, lack of international exposure. And even the ones that played on Sunday, I think the cutting edge that and, and the fitness levels that you would expect uh, wasn't there as well. So I think it's a right assessment by both coaches. It, share, it, it does show where both programs are currently. Yeah, and Brent, there were a few 
of the TNT internationals that now ply their trade in, in Jamaica at Mount Pleasant and Montego Bay, among them Nathaniel James, a teenager, and um, Aubrey. Um, how did they do in this two-match series for you? No, I think they did well. I mean, when you look at uh, the players that may look for uh, a spot and not playing that goes to Canada in the games, uh, that the game that is a kind of playing game for the Copa, I think certainly the, the, two, the duo from Mount Pleasant has done themselves uh, uh, good justice. You look at the center half pairing with, with Jamal Jack and, and Primus, uh, and I would even add Trigginham, who plays his trade out at Montego Bay, and it's a, an area of the field where Trinidad seems to struggle a bit, uh, has done well. The normal culprits in the likes of uh, Dwayne Mockett, unfortunately, who got injured and had to come off half time, uh, and John Paul Rushford and Puna Anjanon, certainly there and thereabouts for a national team call up. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the new boys, uh, Rondell Gibson, who would have played his first couple of national team caps. I think he's knocking on the door. Uh, I think outside of that, uh, some of the players obviously didn't live up to some of the expectation. But I think those are some of the positives that Angus Eve could look at uh, as it relates to a deeper and wider pool of players that he could possibly call from. Yeah, and Brent, you know, a lot of thought would be in that Copa America team. That's, that match is coming up just in a few days from now, if we were to look at it like that, March 23. What did you see? You know, positive signs or maybe areas to improve as we get ready for that big, big match? Yeah, look, it is certainly areas to improve. Of course, uh, tactically, it would have always been a challenge to get the fluidity and structure that you'd want. It's a kind of a slap together team of, of, of players that play locally. So I don't think Angus would have had it the length of time necessary uh, to get the, the right sort of cohesion that he may have won. But one thing's evident, Mariah, that I think that most people at the Larry Goom Stadium would have been whispering out of their mouth is the fact that Trinidad Tobago seems to have a certain shyness when it comes to playing uh, forward in transitional moments. They've won the balls off, off of the Jamaicans and with the pace of Aubrey and James, uh, just to name a few, it seems to be a little bit of a naivety and always wanted to go backwards instead of, of driving forward. Trinidad looked the most dangerous when they were on the front foot, when they played front foot football, but it seems that they wanted to go back. I'm not sure if that was an instruction from the coaching staff but it's something that was very evident as it relates to the game coming up against Canada. Of course, Canada is odds on favorite to go on, but there has to be some substance in Trinidad and Tobago if they are to defeat the Canadians. They can't go there and expect to defend for 90 minutes plus. There has to be an other, an, 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 another plan, an alternative plan to try to get a result. So I think that is one of the question marks coming out of the, the game. Albeit, as I said, it's a, it's a group of players that probably didn't have the time to gel to have a real uh, tactical assessment uh, done on them. Yeah, can't really give them a proper grading because, you know, these are just players, Angus Eve, of course, trying to feel out and decide if he adds them to his uh, bigger crop of players. Brent, were you satisfied with the turnout in Trinidad and Tobago to support? It was a bit disappointing, especially in the, the backdrops of uh, what transpired at the National Stadium on Tuesday when the the National the 20 team played against Canada and it was a sold out crowd. It was reports of, of fans being turned around because there was an expectation of, of uh, only 5,000 or so fans more turned up and, and because of the regulations around fire and police, they weren't able to enter more. Uh, so you thought off of that, you may have had uh, a bigger turnout in Larry Goom Stadium on a Sunday. I must admit the timing uh, at 4 p.m. may have had some difficulties for fans. And I've always felt that Larry Gomes is a stadium in terms of fans coming to could be a bit tricky. So I think those factors uh, certainly play this part in terms of the attendance. And I'm, I'm only using the game on Tuesday, the under-20 game against Canada, as a reason why there should have been more fans. Uh, and I think that would have been a disappointment for this for the senior team and certainly uh, for the association, because I, I, I do know they were catering for more persons. Yeah, Brent, I guess the disappointment for me, and I had a look at both games, the disappointment would be the decision-making process of a number of the players, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. And it, for me, yes, you're coming up against a like team um, on both ends, but I just thought overall, in some critical areas of the pitch, the decision-making was not great on either side. I mean, your thoughts? No, I think that's a I think that's a valid concern, Ricardo. I mean, look, both coaches, 
are seemingly very rigid in their approach. And, and, and I use rigid, not in the sense of uh, almost uh, hand and desk type of rigid, but they, they want to play with a particular sort of structure uh, and a, a particular type of philosophy. And as I mentioned with the Trinidad and Tobago team, they seemingly want to go back before they go forward. With the Jamaican team, they went very direct. When you have players like Alex Marshall, uh, in particular Fletcher, who, and, and of course, young Dixon, who showed great 1v1 potential. They, they, they were not able to express themselves more. And, and maybe because of both coaches wanting their both charges to stay within a respective uh, sort of framework, they weren't able to. And, and that's, that was a bit of a disappointment because you can clearly tell with the type of attacking uh, talent that was on display, uh, despite, of course, we could possibly say they're B and C teams, they were still players that could excite uh, but they weren't able to and they weren't allowed to and it seemed like they didn't want to because it almost seemed like they were given instructions not to. Yeah, and a quick word, Brent, on the 19-year-old Kahim Dixon who scored the only goal of the two matches. Look, I thought he was outstanding and, and he, he played with, a, as much as I've, of what I've just said, he played with a level of freedom uh, that certainly showed that Maybe he can be in the record. And as I mentioned, it's a long list of injuries. Of course, the recent one being Amari Bell uh, being injured. So can Addiction fit into the team? I, I think it will be a big gamble uh, for the coach. But what he displayed on Friday, I think he should be there and thereabouts to any training team, any team that's that's uh, in the pool of players to possibly uh, go and play against the Americans because he, he's done exceptionally well. Yeah, OK, uh, Brent, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for talking to us about this. As we said, uh, TNT and Jamaica both have important international assignments coming up later in March. The TNT team up against the Canadians and the Jamaicans in a Nations League semifinal against the USA. We'll watch their progress, uh, Brent, and be in touch with you as well. Thanks, man. No problem. Yeah, and we'll be back with more on the Sports Max Zone. Still La Liga to talk about. Big news coming out of La Liga this past weekend. And uh, on the other side of the break, we'll tackle that.